Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are debating on the motion eliminate restrictions on the production of generic pharmaceuticals. We define restrictions as laws that limit to a certain extent the production of generic pharmaceuticals, and we define generic pharmaceuticals as drugs that are identical or bioequivalent to an original brand name drug in dosage, form, safety, usage, route of administration, quality, performance characteristics. We, the pro side, strongly support the motion in that generic pharmaceuticals hold countless benefits and therefore promote the well-being of society. This house would lift all restrictions on the production of generic pharmaceuticals, as well as eliminating all um, patents for newly developed drugs. We will provide two strong sub-points illustrating the benefits and pr practicality of our policy. The first one being the economic benefits and the second one being production incentives for manufacturers. Now let me proceed with our first <coughs> argument. Despite the fact that generic drugs are chemically equivalent to their branded counterparts, they are sold at substantially discounted prices from the original's branded price. This is because its manufacturers don't have the investment cost of the developer of a new drug and can reverse engineer known drug compounds to create, um, cre allow them to manufacture its bioequivalent versions. Generic manufacturers also did not bear the burden of proving the safety and efficiency of the drugs through costly and duplicative cl clinical trials since these trials have already been conducted by the brand name company. While some might raise concerns about the safety of generic drugs, its safety can be perfectly assured in that generic drugs meet the same rigid standards proved by the FDA as its original drugs. This saves a substantially large amount of money for consumers. According to the Congressional Budget Office, generic drugs save approximately eight to $10 billion a year at retail pharmacies. Even more billions are saved when hospitals use generic drugs. The average retail price of a generic drug is only about $32, whereas the average retail price of a brand name drug is well over $111. Also, the cost of generic drugs are so low that many developing and third world countries who don't have the um, technology to manufacture these drugs can easily afford and use them in case of a public health emergency. For example, Thailand, a country that due to financial burdens had trouble importing expensive brand name drugs, <coughs> is importing millions of generic version of Plavix pills, a blood thinning treatment to prevent heart attacks with just three cents per pill. Even we, um, we believe that this policy is highly practical. Generic drugs account for a large majority of drugs being sold in the market and is already a big part of our lives. Even the government recognizes and is highly supportive of generic drugs. As and in October 4th of 2007, the FDA launched a generic, no thank you, generic initiative for value and efficiency or GIVE. This, initi this initiative will use existing resources to help FDA modernize and stream, streamline the generic drug approval process. Ladies and gentlemen, why bother, why insist on using expensive, overly priced brand name drugs when its generic drug counterparts can give you the same exact result for a much lower price? These drugs, yes? Um, you said you gave the example of the um, heart disease, um, um, Plavix. Yeah, Plavix. However, um, you said they are sold for three cents, right? Yes. However, those are, um, for the information I've read in, there are illegal um, generic drugs that was made without the original maker's consent while it was still on the patent. From my source of information, it states that these drugs are made in India, a, lar a major manufacturer of generic drugs, and they're perfectly legal. Thank you. Um, lady, oh, so these drugs are required by the law to be the same except the branding. We therefore urge you to choose this inexpensive yet equally effective option of generic drugs. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Side, I'd like to I'd like to mention that there that this team has not mentioned their team burden. They don't even know what they have to prove. They what they have to prove in order to pass this policy. Um, and also, they mentioned that uh, it costs a lot to the it costs a lot of money to the patient since um, original brand brand medicine is a lot expensive than. Uh, generic drugs, but <coughs> in the long run, when when um, original brand name companies do not get enough profit to uh, develop newer newer drugs, newer drugs, they not only poor people but also the normal um, the normal patients would also get um, side uh, side effects of this policy too. No thank you. Um, and now, for our team's burden, we need to prove that improving the status quo by the suggested policy is impossible and harmful in the long run. I, as a first speaker, will um, I, as a first speaker, will say that we need to protect the intellectual properties of the pharmaceutical companies. And Yoon Jung, as a second speaker, she we're going to talk about alternative ways. Point. Nothing. And the need patent laws and the need for patent laws to, in order to lower investment into the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and lastly, Junyoung will sum up our debates, uh, sum up our, our side's points. Um, and now back to our first point, I'm going to focus on economic reasons of protecting the intellectual properties of pharmaceutical um, companies. Point. First, <coughs> develop, developing drugs. Develop, uh, investing in the development of new drugs is a very risky investment. Uh, it takes lots of money. It costs lots of money for a long time, which Point. is about no, thank you, six million dollars to develop a new medicine uh, for 14.9 years, and many drugs could not pass the uh, third clinical trial trials, which means that they fa they they are there are a high possibility of failing fail, 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 fail development uh, without even um, going into the market. <coughs> um, the, patent protects the, the patent protects the investment including research, development, marketing and promotion by giving the money by giving the company the sole right to sell the drug while it is in effect. Uh, which means that the profits from mon from the monopoly of the company during the patent period, which is about um, seven to twenty years, are incentives for such investment. <coughs> um, second, <coughs> pharmaceutical industry is highly profitable. Last year, the pharmaceutical industry had seven point eight percent growth. Point. Yes, you mentioned that. Well, you mentioned that it will be hard. Um, eliminating restrictions on the part. Um, Eliminating restrictions will be part, will be beneficial in the long run, but how do you know it is? Do, how do, how can you say that it's not just an estimation? We already we've already mentioned the correct statistics that that show that um, that show that generic drugs are cost um, pharma, um brand name drugs are costing us much so much more money like ten billion dollars that we don't we that we don't necessarily need and. Do you not realize that generic drugs are already popular? It accounts for 64% of the prescriptions being written in the United States. Thank you. So what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> Can you summarize your... I'm saying that your point doesn't make sense. Yeah, um... You, <laughs> the pro side is suggesting the eliminating the whole patent policy. The first speaker mentioned, but our side has alternative 
um, modifications to the current existing policy. Um, <coughs> Uh, to continue, uh, the last year, the pharmaceutical industry had 7.8 growth rate with $4 billion worth of market. According to a chief researcher at Research Institute of Yilian, once a, medicine is, a new medicine is developed, it can boost <coughs> a, a country's trade figure at once and raise the position in the international society. For example, Viagra, a highly successful, is a highly successful example. In 1999, Pfizer's Viagra set the world record for earning three trillion dollars just in nine months. Um, pharmaceutical companies they bring <coughs> huge benefits to a country's economy, eliminating the current um, policy. Current patent, no, thank you. Current patent policy would have a negative effect <coughs> in the pharmaceutical industry. Why bother to eliminate the whole uh, patent policy when there are when it can be only when the current situation can be can improve with just um, minor modif modifications to the current existing policy. Um, our next speaker, Yun Jung, will continue with alternative ways and the need to and need and the need for um, patent loss. Thank you. Is going to give the second speech for the prop side as well. As the second speaker of the pro team, I'll first make some rebuttals. The off team has uh, gave us some ideas that pay patent laws can and uh, companies profiting from those uh, monopoly power will bring pro profits to the country's economy. However, if you have paid attention to the economic class uh, last semester, you will learn that monopoly market uh, m monopoly causes market failure and thus is less effective than a uh, com competition market in which many companies can produce uh, pharmaceutical medicine and uh, yeah okay uh, well. I'll give you some details of, of our team's policy. We said that we'll eliminate the restrictions, all restrictions, including pa patents. So we might naturally think then, uh, what happens to the developers, right? An average, well, we know that average development of medicine costs like $800 million, and which is currently being subsidized by seven to 20 years of monopoly power. Uh, this. Uh, is uh, economically inefficient because monopoly is basically a failure of market in the first place. Uh, no. Now, and there are people in the third world countries who are suffering, who are dying because they cannot afford to buy the expensive medicine and cheap uh, generic drugs are not available because of the patent laws uh, preventing from their production. Now, subsidizing, subsidizing the developers is possible in other ways than patents. Uh, subsidy we have come up with is creating an organization uh, similar to the Nobel Foundation of the Nobel Prize. Now, Nobel Prize uh, Foundation pays the winners uh, with the money Alfred Nobel deposited in a safe with its interests. Now, we can make a medical foundation. <coughs> this organization, uh, international organization, will consist of members from most of the countries of the world. And each of those... Uh, yes? Well, you said that you're going to organize a uh, medical organization. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to organize it? And who will be in charge of organizing the organization? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Now, uh, well, this organization will have uh, members of each of the international <coughs> countries and each of them will 
deposit their share of the investment. And <coughs> now, in doing in doing so, uh, c countries are uh, just a second. Countries uh, can uh, benefit to their own countries' uh, economics economics because uh, they all countries will be able to make uh, generic drugs and. Um, Cheaper drugs will be available for its citizens, and this account that will, of medical foundation will have uh, tax exemptions and high interest rates to uh, make sure the med medical developers are fully subsidized for their effort, and <coughs> and now uh, medical developers, if, if this policy is to pass. Uh, Medical developers will be fully not only be fully subsidized for their effort, but also be granted uh, the honor of having their names placed in the Hall of Fame. And plus, uh, we will increase government support of the, this uh, new medication. Uh, we will support the government investment for development of new medications. So uh, the innovators will have less burden. And now, uh, one thing to seriously take into account is that patent law is very harmful for the society. And because uh, most medicines uh, take o over a year to produce. And if producers fail, fail to uh, predict how, how much medicine will be needed uh, years later, we, uh, we all have short of supply. If we allow generic drugs to uh, help the supply, we will have uh, less shortage of medicine when we need them. Okay. Now this policy is so this policy is needed for the third world countries people who are dying because the cheap medicines are not available, and this policy is also needed for us for us to get cheaper medicine and oh thank you speech, um, we'll have two floor speeches, so be thinking about what you might say for either side. Okay, let's welcome you. Um, our team um, doesn't deny that genetic drugs are useful, um, there is no use in denying that. They are thought to be original versions, of, um, to be same as the original versions of the drugs, and they are also cheap and economical. However, what they forget is that the generic drugs exist because they're the prior versions that the original versions um, of the drugs were in that, um, were made, um, which uh, are thousands I and mean, millions of dollars. If we get rid of a whole patent, if we get rid of whole patent laws, there will be no more incentive for these um, pharmaceutical companies to continue on with their research. And I would like to make some. Um, Rebuttals to what Jun have said. Um, she said that um, the pills that were being sold in India, it's perfectly legal. However, um, the uh, it was it was made legal only in India, and the actually um, the company who sued in the court of India is actually thinking about taking this problem into an international level because they think that oh, no, no, thank you, isn't fair. Also. Um, 
the um, subsidy that the second speaker has mentioned. Um, as you've heard, uh, creating one single drug um, takes million, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars. Even with government support, it, I think it's going to be hard to subsidize all the money, subsidize all those companies to actually put that. Thank ma'am. Yes. If we're talking about economic terms, I have mentioned countless times that the benefit of, by using generic drugs, we save more than $10 billion every year. Don't you think that totally outweighs the cost that you're talking about? Well, I've, I've also said that there's not only one company that makes <coughs> a single drug. There are tens, maybe hundreds of companies that are actually going on the research. Now I'll go on my main point. Um, Prop team have talked about the reasons why the patent law should disappear. They create monopol monopoly, force extremely high prices, and exclude the benefit of new drugs Point from those who can't afford it. Um, our team doesn't deny that these are happening. Sometimes the pharmaceutical companies overexercise their market power. However, for cases like this, there's something called compul compulsory licensing, which gives rights to a third person or a group to make generic versions of the original drug without the original maker's consent. This is a legal act that is also approved by the WTO um, TRIPS, Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. For example, last January, government pharmaceutical organizations in Thailand used this in order to pro provide medical care to 170,000 people <coughs> with AIDS or HIV. And if this is not, is not enough, then government should create antitrust laws to protect consumers or modify the current patent laws so that consumers can be protected. However, what the problem did not, what the problem did right now was, was to get rid of the patent laws and protect the original makers of the drugs. Um, get rid of the patent laws that protect the original makers of the drugs from the less expensive generic drugs in the competitive market in order to drop the price down. Yes? Uh, I have mentioned that this medical foundation it will be able to uh, subsidize the medical developers because uh, example of Nobel Prize is enough to pay like four million dollars e every year and medical foundation will be an international uh, fund so it will naturally be enough to um, thank you I get your point however Nobel Prize is given to uh, one or two people however as I said there are tens and hundreds of pharmaceutical companies that are actually researching because of the possible incentive they can get in the future. One price is not enough. Out of order. So, um, if this policy is passed, the pharmaceutical companies will find the business unprofitable and will start to draw from making new drugs. However, there are still many diseases um, that are that are still um, that could cripple and kill people, but has no cure. And also, um, there also antibiotic resistant bacteria are spreading, so the original medicines that are already existing don't work. Um, if we get rid of the patent laws, there will be no more companies who are going to invest their money to develop new drugs because there's no incentive. If the patent laws are gone, then the generic drug makers are going to just straight, um, just going to copyright out when the orig um, the new drugs come out. So there won't be the benefit of gaining money from monopoly. And so, in conclusion, the current society is under an urgent need of a new medicine. And to get medicine, pharmaceutical companies should invest in developing new drugs. So, the regulations on generic drugs and um, and that they cannot be sold prior to that of the end of the drug pay patent should be kept. Thank you.
sorry. Uh, we were going to read that. I think we have it. Okay. Juan Luigi Ui. And what about. What's on that? Oh, no. Are we going to read that? Second semester. Yeah. Okay. And we heard from you too, didn't we? Young Young, did we hear from you? No. Didn't think so. Okay. Any preference? Oh, position. Oh, you guys both went off. Okay. Subscribe. Ben. Bye. Bye. Go. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Prop. Awesome. Okay. One more. Okay. 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 I don't think the camera can hear. Uh, if you could start over and speak a little more loudly, please. Thank you. Young Yan. The pro side of this debate have been saying that they would eliminate the restrictions on the generic pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they've given an uh, alternative to make make a international organizations to to give the incentive for the um, pro, pro, producing the drugs. However, it is totally impractical in that the funds would be really hard to even collect. Because if it's <laughs> if it is uh, international organizations it needs to be collected from a lot of countries, and he have the someone have stated that the countries would give the um, give the tax cut on the producers. However, why would the countries have the incentive to um, have the incentive to give them the tax cut, and they would have the and it would have have hard time collecting the funds? Thank you.